Welcome back, Trek students. I'm Megan, and today we're going to continue to look at what happened in Genesis chapter 3. There's a lot of information in this chapter, but it's so important for us to understand the events because they impact our lives significantly. And it's also important to know that the Bible doesn't present the story of the Garden of Eden as just a story to make a point, but the Garden was a real place in a real time. Today's lesson is called Expelled. Maybe you've only heard that term used when it comes to school. You could be expelled from school or a favorite hangout spot. Basically, it means that you've been asked to leave and you can't come back, ever. So let's check in with Maddie and Ella and they'll help explain what being expelled has to do with our lesson. Hey Trek students, I'm Ella and today we're gonna look at lesson 2.6 in our handbooks. And I'm Maddie. For the last several weeks, we have been looking closely at Genesis chapter three and how the events that occurred completely changed the world God created. So let's get started by turning to page 110 in our handbooks. Here we're asked to create something that, that, that describes what separation means to us. This is what I put together. I decided to make a piece showing you what separation looks like for me. So as you can see on my art, separation for me is like this big wall between me and God. I can't see through it and I can't break it. This is what sin creates in our relationship with God. And this is what I created. In my art, I have two cliffs separated by a valley. There's no bridge and no way to get to the other side. Sin is like a big valley separating us from God. So what does separation have to do with our lesson this week? Well, after Adam and Eve sinned, God spoke some very harsh words over them, including that having, a, that having a baby would be very painful and that work would be hard. That was in the Trek video last week, how one of the many things we lost the day that sin entered the world was frustration-free work. After God said those things to Adam and Eve, he banished them from the garden. In Genesis 3.23, we can read those exact words. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. That seems like a really harsh punishment just for eating fruit. Why did God banish them? Was he really that angry? If we read verse 22, it gives us the answer. And it says, And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, they did something evil, and immediately they realized that what they had done was evil. Before that, they only knew good. So by doing evil, they learned about evil. Satan told Eve that would happen. In verse five, he said to her, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. But there's a big problem with Adam and Eve understanding evil. They were very different from God. God understands evil and good and is completely good. There's no evil in him. But Adam and Eve not only understood evil, they did something evil. They were no longer innocent and they were going to keep doing evil. Yeah, so the Bible tells us this in John 8 verse 34. Jesus was speaking to a group of people and he says, very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. That means anyone who sins, they will always keep sinning. And as soon as Adam and Eve sinned, that meant for the rest of their lives, they would keep sinning. And that's true for us too. So why did God banish Adam and Eve from the garden? Well, in a way, God does that to save them from us. If Adam and Eve were to eat from the tree of life, they would live forever and they would keep doing evil forever. And if their children grew up in the garden, they would also eat from the tree of life and live forever and keep on doing evil forever. And the same thing for their grandchildren and great-grandchildren and anyone who is ever born, which means us too. God could not allow that to happen, to have evil, to have evil exist forever. Adam had to, God had to banish Adam and Eve and protect the tree of life. And not only that, but God could not be around sin. Adam and Eve couldn't be with him anymore because they had sinned and he had to separate himself from them. He made them leave their home, the garden, and they had to live the rest of their life apart from God. And the rest of their life was filled with frustration and pain, just like we heard in last week's Trek video. After God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden, he had to protect it. Genesis 3.24 says, After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flashing sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the Tree of Life. God needed to make sure no sinful human would ever, make, would ever get near the Tree of Life. What a sad day for Adam and Eve. God made them to be with him, to talk to him every day. And they were doing work that they enjoyed and they had everything they could ever need. It was a perfect life. 
and then they sinned, and they must have felt so lonely and empty the day they left the garden. And the Bible tells us that those feelings we still feel today, those who have chosen to trust Jesus are spiritually connected to God. But because of sin, all of us are separated from his presence, and we will be until we get to heaven. And that is where our hope came from. That when we choose Jesus, the pain and suffering we experience here on earth, the separation from God we experience is not eternal. Our physical bodies will die one day, but then it means that we get to be reunited with God in heaven. How amazing is that? Thanks for joining us today. Bye. Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden. The garden represents where God's presence is. He was present in the garden with Adam and Eve. God does not tolerate sin to be in his presence. God hates sin. Therefore, sin must be removed. And because of Adam and Eve's sin, it created a divide, a separation between God and man. Their expulsion from the garden was their physical separation from him as well. God continued to interact with humanity, but it was on his own terms. Humanity did not have access to God like they had in the garden. Imagine how awful that day was. Imagine the beauty of the garden. Imagine what it was like amongst the perfection. God was there, and now they would be cast out from it, and every day of their lives thereafter, they would remember what it was like to be with Him. Sin is a serious issue. God takes sin very seriously. We read this story and think, eh, it's not that bad. However, the truth is, it was really bad. God had every right to remove them from the garden. God has every right to remove sin from His presence, and He desires sin to be removed from ours as well. Our verse this week is found in Ephesians 2 verse 12, and it says, Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. Here, Paul is reminding the Christians in Ephesus that they used to be completely hopeless because they had no connection to God. They weren't Jews, so they weren't considered to be God's people. And if you have no connection to God, you literally have nothing. But there is hope. I think I say that every week, but it's important to know that. We're gonna talk about that hope more next time. In the meantime, let's pray and ask God to help us with understanding what it means to be a sinner separated from Him. Because knowing that makes developing a relationship with Jesus mean that much more. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that um, you have given us life, Lord, that there is hope in all of this, that even though we have been separated from you because of our sin, Lord, there is hope. There is Jesus, right? And so I'm excited to talk to that, talk to the kids about that next week. And um, thank you for just for your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for joining me, bye.